reopens after 11 weeks of lockdown over COVID-19. It's nine days since the federal government announced restriction of movement in Lagos, Ogun State, and the federal capital territory. Thus far, the restriction appears to have worked, but the country is still recording newer COVID-19 cases. Delta and Kassina State, clear examples. About 254 confirmed cases of COVID-19, that is the total number. At the Nigerian Center for Disease Control announced 17 new cases yesterday evening. Ten of the new cases in Lagos, two each in the FCT or your, and or your state, and one each in Delta and Katsina states. 44 cases have been discharged, six deaths have been recorded. Uh, the index case, um, and that is uh, in his state, the very first. Uh, we'll be connecting with him uh, to get the latest update on that case, seeing as yesterday several measures were put in place with regards to palliatives and food banks um, for uh, the people in the state. Now let's go over to Edo, where the governor there, Gordon Obaseki, today made a frightening revelation as he told the people in a state broadcast that unless the citizens conduct themselves better, there will be no more cases in the coming days. He also appealed to those who may have already been exposed to submit themselves to screening and proper handling. As of today, Edo State has 11 confirmed cases and sadly, one death from COVID-19. Unfortunately, from the evidence we now have, the number of cases are likely to increase significantly in the next few weeks, unless we take very drastic actions now to slow down the spread. We have gathered information that large numbers of our citizens who traveled back home in the last several weeks from overseas may not have self-isolated themselves. Although majority of the current cases are individuals with travel history and those of their relatives, in the coming days we are likely to see community transmission of the virus to people who do not have any travel history. As a result of these developments, we have to now adopt more stringent measures while still trying to protect the livelihoods of our people. Edo State Government is very reluctant to have a total shutdown of the state because of the hardship it will cost to our people. However, if we are going to stop the spread of the virus, every person must be involved. It must be a shared responsibility. The government of Edo State will shut down any hotel found to be hosting guests who travel from outside the state and have not informed the COVID-19 response team to screen such guests. All government hospitals and primary health care centers and designated private clinics will be used as screening centers to screen citizens who believe that they may have been exposed or suspect that they may have symptoms of COVID-19. The state government, they're announcing those tough measures. Well, over in River State, the controversy over the alleged arrest of two pilots with Caverton helicopters is still brewing in the state as the helicopter owners are appealing to the federal government to prevail on the state government to release its two pilots remanded in prison by a Port Harcourt magistrate court. The pilots were arrested for allegedly violating the executive order issued by the River State governor aimed at checking the spread of COVID-19 in the state. According to the Flight Crew Association in Nigeria, the pilots were operating essential oil and gas services. In response, the River State Governor declared that he is willing to testify against persons who violate the state's border closure regulations. The Governor was speaking at the office of the River State Commissioner of Police, where he insisted that the pilots illegally transported extra trades to the state. However, the helicopter service operator saying both itself and its clients have exemption approval to fly and continue operations in the oil and gas industry. So talking more on the...
the pandemic in Nigeria and across the world. Also, government's intervention so far. Joining us from the United Kingdom is Dr. Dave Lale. He is a physician with the National Health Service, NHS UK. Thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, tell us how are doctors coping with the shortages of personal protective equipment? Uh, it is said that some doctors are told to hold their breath to avoid getting infected. Oh, uh, thank, thank you for the, uh, for the opportunity. Um, with regards to the BPE over here, uh, I can only comment on what I've been personally uh, what I've been personally exposed to. I think that where I am, I have enough. I have, uh, I have no challenges myself finding the sort of protective equipment to use. Tell us about uh, what we're doing here in Nigeria. Um, some people are saying it's a few numbers in terms of um, comparing to the cases around the world, and a number of people are being discharged. Um, how do you think we're handling things? Well, from, from, from what I understand, from what I'm able to read uh, on social media and around, uh, I, I, I think Nigeria is doing quite a good job. It appears that for, for reasons that are not entirely clear at the moment, the, the pattern of disease spread is quite different as it was obtainable in Europe at the moment. Uh, Nigeria is probably still, if, if it will progress beyond what it is, Nigeria is probably still in the early phases of, of the disease in terms of the fact that the number of cases they are getting, the pattern of the presentation and the strategies required to manage them. So I think because... Nigeria is at a phase where lockdown and isolation can curtail the spread of the illness. I want to believe that the, the NCDC in Nigeria are doing a fantastic job at the moment. Now, we hear the UK also reports a number of uh, people coming out to take advantage of the brighter, sunny weather. Um, Lagos is experiencing the same uh, social distancing in some areas are thrown out the window. How best do you think government can, can deal with this? Uh, well, I, I think they just con they have to continue to re-emphasize the importance of the social distancing uh, and stay-at-home measures. They, they, I don't think there's anything much much more that they can do. Already in Nigeria, we've seen cases of high-handedness of the military and the police dealing with these measures. I wonder if they're going to engage in physical restraints already and then further compromising the idea of uh, social distancing. So I think... They have to continue with public enlightenment, continue to sort of reorientate people. It, 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 it's difficult, really, to expect that people will stay at home for such a period of time. But unfortunately, there is no other way. So I think it, it's just about uh, this, the, the public information management strategies just have to continue right. to do over and over again. We'd like to appreciate your time, Dr. Deji Olale, uh, Physician, National Health Service, NHS UK. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Well, over here in Lagos, we have Mrs. Israel Blessing, Chairman, National Association of Nurses and Midwives, Lagos State Chapter. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. What's your observation since we experience our index case here in uh, Nigeria? Uh, my observation is enormous. I want to say sincerely that uh, Lagos State Government have taken a proactive step as well as Nigeria government as a whole in ensuring that they are mitigating strategies in place to ensure that we curtail this disease COVID-19. Now, um, the World Health Organization, or rather, let's let's start with the risk, um, you know, to health workers, especially the nurses and midwives who make up a very large portion of our health workers. How do you think they're coping with this pandemic? Uh, nurses are coping with the pandemic, and at the same time, we are overworked as nurses because we have few nurses in the field. And we believe that uh, now a lot of volunteers have, have come out to support to ensure that we curtail this disease, COVID-19. And there are a lot of challenges that nurses are facing presently in Nigeria. All right. The well, personal protective equipment yeah. are not sufficient. 
the welfare transportation, there are those challenges that I see that is really stressing our members in various hospitals. Just been told that we have uh, the Deputy Governor of Kano State, Dr. Nasser Gawuna, and we also understand you are in charge of the uh, task force on COVID-19. We'd like to welcome you to the program. Um, tell us what the measures are so far in Kano State. Well, thank you and good afternoon. And, uh, the state of affairs in terms of COVID-19 uh, in Kano is, uh, as everybody knows, Kano is yet to record any positive uh, occurrence, but uh, we are preparing very well in terms, uh, in case we have something like that. But in terms of uh, prevention, we're doing all we can to see that we have done that. And uh, we have set up uh, various isolation centers uh, to do with the intensive care and then the normal isolation centers where we can uh, house the first-hand cases uh, before they got into the critical aspect. So far, the Sani Abacha Stadium uh, has been set up to handle uh, about 500 uh, patients. And uh, the Wanadawaki, which is the major ICU isolation center, has 72 beds with uh, ventilators and all necessary uh, health uh, facility to handle any severe case. Deputy Governor, just because uh, we don't have a, a, a lot of time, sorry to cut it, but I must quickly ask you about some of the palliatives for uh, the vulnerable in the state, what some of these measures are, if you can, um, in about 40 seconds. Okay, the palliatives uh, we have received so far 364 million from uh, different uh, individuals and uh, food items that is worth, I think, over 200 and something million as of now. And uh, we are working on modalities on how we can be able to uh, distribute those goods. We are targeting about 300,000 households for that. And then other palliatives that have come is the issue of the conditional cash transfer, which uh, already 15 local governments are going to benefit uh, from that because already the data and the people are there. Uh, instead of the normal 5,000 per month, uh, now they are going to receive 20,000 each. That is uh, money for four months uh, collectively. And they have started that already with uh, we're a local government, uh, one of the local government yesterday, right. and now they are moving to other local governments. Deputy of Governor, local government. we would like to appreciate your, your time and your contributions. Thank you so much. We should have time on this issue, but we know we'll come to you. Uh, they're saying the, the state there has no case of COVID-19, but I'm sure that's also what the Delta State Government and Katsina State Government thought as well. But we'd like to thank you, Mrs. Israel Blessing, as well. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the program. Still to come on the COVID-19 update. in the state. The meeting was conveyed to review the measures taken by the state government in preventing the spread of COVID-19 in the state. In a statement signed by the Secretary to the state government, Dr. Mustafa Inoua, people are strongly advised to maintain social distancing and strictly adhere to all rules and regulations as provided by health experts in fighting the disease. 
still dissecting the COVID-19 impact in Nigeria and the world. Joining us now in our studio is Dr. Adishinu Adega. He's an, he's an immunologist, a research scientist from Mountaintop University. Thank you for joining us on the program. So, immunologist, first ask, or rather, let's understand how it appears this virus attacked different people as a result of different from mild to uh, moderate to severe. Well, it depends on the intensity of the, of the, of the virus in each uh, individual and how each individual is coping through the immune system of the body, how the immune system is attacking the virus and the playing down and the, there are so many factors that are there. And this affects how it uh, might affect older people uh, more severely than younger people, people yeah. with underlying yeah, the, the, illnesses. The younger people and the older people, they have low immune system, while these active ones are still having uh, very active, active immune system. So is that why you think the cases that have been discharged, 44 so far, that they've had a very strong immune system that's helped them survive this? Back with that, and uh, I want to see the disappointment to, to proclaim them and to say something here, which is very important. Vitamin C has been found to be uh, effective, and we're still on trial for, for total acceptance. It's on, it's on rather, it's on, uh, it's on a control trial right now, and they're doing much about it to try to confirm it. It is this some people have been using as a palliative treatment, palliative as it, to control the severity of the disease. So that's what we're doing. And here, we don't even need to be looking for vitamin C. We have so many, so many vitamin C. Garlic, we eat it. Orange, we eat it. Uh, thank you, all the foods that contain it. You know, as much as I'm still so doing that, then, then they, they'll be playing down the, of, the, of the virus. But you know, that, that almost suggests that if you have a virus, and you're saying people who are self isolating if they take vitamin C and, and garlic, that it will, it will reduce the severity. I must say it will kill. Severity, so that it will do recovery. Okay, we'll one wait for perhaps the NCDC and you know the Ministry of Health and perhaps the World Health Organization, um, what they have to say on that. Um, you're an expert in vaccines, anti uh, microbial resistance. Tell us the race to the 19 and then screening for for any infective uh, uh, organisms like HIV, hepatitis, and all that. Once they are screened, this the plasma can be used. However, the plasma, I mean, the blood of the person donating the plasma must be of the same blood group, depending with the patient. So that, that's an important factor. We are going to be adopting that in Nigeria. All right, I'd like to inform you about this news that just in from Katina State, an update uh, that the uh, in the state, the ban on Friday prayers has been lifted. And the governor is, however, calling for caution. Uh, the ban on Friday prayers has been lifted, uh, but the governor is also calling for caution. So social distancing uh, still in place there. Well, let's uh, return um, to this issue. Um, the use of the plasma of the patient, because um, uh, we heard this during the first index case, and how they can apply that to perhaps making, you know, yeah. curing the well, other. The use of the patient, the use of the plasma from the from the patient that recover, that recover from the okay. that must be must be screened. Number one, it must be sure that the patient that is totally free, recovered fully, and tested negative after 14 days of recovery. And then uh, you do not screen for the for any infectious disease like HIV, hepatitis, and all that. And I said, however, the person must have the same blood group, the same blood group with the, with the patient that we are receiving it. All right, that's interesting. Sorry? That, I said that's a, you know, rather scientific interesting. Um, Very important because if there is, is a blood group, if you are receiving mind, your blood group is different from mine, yes. it's a great problem. Well, actually, thank you. Uh, we know we'll have you a little bit more on the program, you know, to expatiate on this. Thank you so much, immunologist, research scientist, Dr. Adishina Adega. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, with the month-long lockdown in the city of Wuhan in China's Hubei province, where the COVID-19 pandemic started, it has been lifted. Now, it comes after China reported no deaths on Tuesday, that's yesterday, the first time since it began publishing figures. Globally, cases have exceeded 1.4 million. As the rest of the world slowly goes into lockdown, the Chinese city of Wuhan, where the coronavirus first emerged last December, has started reopening. 
healthy residents and visitors are now able to leave the city. Train, road and rail connections have also resumed. Roughly 65,000 people had left within hours of the restrictions being lifted. It's a different story in the United States where the highest death toll in a single day has been reported. 1,800 fatalities were reported on Tuesday, bringing the total number of deaths in the country to nearly 13,000. The U.S. has more than 398,000 confirmed cases, the highest number in the world. According to preliminary data, the new coronavirus is killing African Americans at a higher rate than the U.S. population at large. Also seeing record numbers is the U.K., where the death toll has risen to at least 6,159 after reporting 786 fatalities in a day. Meanwhile, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is said to be comfortable after spending his second night in intensive care. In other developments, the death toll in France has risen above 10,000, and in Africa, the recorded number of cases has passed the 10,000 mark. And charged with protecting the health of Nigeria, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC's website, has all the information and also statistics on cases across states in the country, regular updates on the COVID-19 regulations, how to efficiently self-isolate and what it means by social distancing. There's, of course, information on the review of those getting tested uh, on COVID-19. Also, the World Health Organization live feedback on the...